In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins as a called and ordained minister of the church of Christ and by his authority. I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is from the Lutheran Book of Worship, hymn number 456, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us gather together in the hymn of praise. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of all power, you called from death our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. Send us as shepherds to rescue the lost, to heal the injured, and to feed one another with knowledge and understanding. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson this morning on the first fourth Sunday of Easter is read to us by Laurel Cluck and will come to us from the Acts of the Apostles, the second chapter. 
a reading from the book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning with the 42nd verse. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning with the 19th verse. For this is a gracious thing when, mindful of God, one endures sorrow, sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to the righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were strained like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
This morning, the word comes to us from St. John's Gospel, the 10th chapter, verses 1 to 10, hearing the voice of promise in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. When I was nine years old, my family moved to New Holland, and I was moved to another elementary school. At my new school, there was one of those those creative art teachers that you find in, in many elementary schools who was just bigger than life. This art teacher, every year around Halloween, would create an elaborate scare tunnel in the large assembly room of our school. The scare tunnel was just that, a small tunnel that you had to crawl through, oftentimes almost entirely in darkness, with all sorts of scary sounds and monsters who would try to grab you and scare you. Leading up to the weekend of the scare tunnel at my elementary school, it was all the kids would talk about on the playground. So the anticipation was high. Most of them had been through it the year or two before, so they had a sense of what to expect. Me being the new kid, I had only the darkest and most extreme thoughts in my mind about what to expect. You know how kids can be with that kind of stuff, and my friends egged me on. All day at school on the Friday of the first day of the scare tunnel, there was a buzz amongst us third graders at the Summit Valley Elementary. My stomach was tied in knots. After dinner, my mom drove me to the school so I could make my way through the scare tunnel. When I arrived at the school, I saw my my friends, and uh, as we waited in line, my fears only increased. I was really scared, and my friends were of no help. I went into the tunnel reluctantly, following after my friends. And as I entered that dark tunnel, I heard all sorts of scary noises. It was dark. After a short bit, there was an escape tunnel for scared kids like me that led to the way out. I took it. I took it and went home crying. When I got home, I cried even more. My mother put my jacket back on me and stuck a pen light in her pocket. She then drove me back to the school with my eyes full of tears. And into that small scare tunnel, my mom went with a pen light in hand saying, let's go. I heard her voice. I heard her voice. Unlike my friends who did all they could to scare me, to build up my fears, I knew my mom's voice. It was the same voice that called me in from the woods when it was time for dinner. It was the same voice that said, I love you. It was that voice that said, come on, let's go. I trusted her voice because I knew she would never let me down. She would never lead me astray. She would never make me even more frightened. Instead, I heard her familiar and loving voice, and I followed. And as we went through that scare tunnel, I held on to her belt with all of my might. She crawled, and I held on. As we came to the end of the scare tunnel, my art teacher was dressed up as a Bigfoot character on big painter stilts, and he let out a big growl, but I wasn't scared anymore. I had my mom leading me, who I knew without a doubt that she would watch out for me no matter what it was, and it was then, because of all of that reassurance, I could see Bigfoot for who he was, my harmless art teacher who was actually smiling if I looked close enough. It was all nothing. And the scare tunnel, and as the scare tunnel ended, my mom and I, we went over and got a hot dog from the school cafeteria, and I remember saying to her, it wasn't all that bad. I wasn't afraid anymore because I had heard her voice, her voice of promise that led me through. Jesus says to us in St. John's Gospel this morning, the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out, for they know his voice. What does his voice say to us? Well, people 
people hear the voice of Jesus in two very different and distinct ways. Some hear his voice as a threat. You need to be a better person. You need to try harder. You need to get yourself together right now or else. Indeed, Jesus does speak a word of threat and judgment, but not on people who are scared, worked over by the law, who stand accused. No. He speaks a word of threat, a word of judgment to the people who are doing the accusing, who are in no need of a physician of the soul, to the Pharisees, to the teachers of the law, to the preachers of the law and self-improvement. Jesus does not hold back. They are thieves, wreckers of souls, stealing salvation. Others, like you, dear Christians, have heard and continue to hear the voice of Jesus as it is, a voice of comfort, a voice of forgiveness and certainty for you. It's the voice of a loving parent comforting a scared child. It's the voice of a father putting his children to bed at night and telling them that nothing will happen to them tonight. The voice of Jesus says to each of us, scared and frightened that we are all at times, I will not forsake you. I am for you. I will lead you. I have taken your sins. I have smashed and defeated your death. Do not be afraid. We trust him. We trust him above all things and all other voices. We trust him not because of anything we are or do, but because of the one who is making the promises to us. It's Jesus who keeps his word, who cannot and will not lie ever. It is his trustworthy voice of promise that we have heard and have come to believe through the working of the Holy Spirit. And when that happens, when that happens, we start to see the world in a very different way. Just like how I saw the scary Bigfoot art teacher at the end of the tunnel for who he really was, a smiling art teacher, so we start to see this dark world in a much different light. If anyone enters by me, Jesus says, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. To go in and out and find pasture means to dwell in safety. And we, dear Christians, dwell in safety knowing that Jesus will not forsake us, leave us, or forget about us. No, instead, he dies and rises for us and watches over us continually, so much so that he knows the number of hairs upon your head. Jesus Christ is the end of the law. We no longer stand accused by it. We no longer are condemned. But instead, joined to Christ by faith and holy baptism, we have life, and we have it abundantly. Not just in the here and now, but forever with Christ. Look, those who push the law, those who tell you you are not good enough, those who tell you that you need to be scared, they are the ones who are out to steal, kill, and destroy by casting doubt on our Lord's promises. Listen to Jesus again. I came, he says, that you may have life and have it abundantly. This is a promise. This is a promise to you. It is yours. Hold that promise of our Lord close to yourself. And he will lead you and bring you home. And there you will say when you arrive, it wasn't all that bad. I'm not scared. In the name of Jesus, the good shepherd who leads us home and always. Amen. Redeemed not with gold or silver, but with the holy, precious blood of Christ, together let us confess the Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Bidden by our good shepherd, let us come before his throne of grace in prayer on behalf of all people according to their needs. Blessed shepherd, you established your church with your sacrificial death and mighty resurrection. Grant us devotion that we may abide in the teaching of the apostles and honor the fellowship of the church. Guard us against all enemies of your word and keep us within the care of your flock forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty shepherd, you hold in your hands all of the might of man and you hold accountable those who would govern your people. Grant to us good government and good leaders who will honor your purpose, protect your people, serve the cause of justice, and defend our liberty against all threats. Give them wisdom and moderation in their pandemic response. Defend and protect our health care providers and first responders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Shepherd, your wounds are our healing, and your voice calls us to you in time of need. Hear us on behalf of all those who suffer in body or mind, who grieve those whom they love and to whom death draws near. We pray especially this morning for Connie, Wanda, Carol, Brooke, Carmen, Janet, Judy, Fran, Steve, Cynthia, Helen. We pray for Eddie Adams and her family, and for the family and friends of Kathy Dunn. And we lift up to you all those who are upon our hearts this morning. Grant them healing according to your will, grace to sustain them in the day of trouble, and hope of the new and everlasting life to come. Be with the unemployed and the distraught, and return them to health and livelihood. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good shepherd, you set your table amongst us in the presence of our enemies. Hear us because we are beset by so many false voices and tempted by so many false gospels. Help us to hear your voice and to abide safely in your word that remains forever. Equip us with your spirit so that we may receive all that you have for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, great good shepherd, we pray you to hear your sheep and answer our prayers with mercy, granting us those things profitable for us and for our salvation and keeping from us all things harmful. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our special music this morning is brought to us, is played by Teresa Lee, our musician, and the piece is entitled, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us.
Thank you, Teresa. Let us pray the offertory prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts. With them, we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction. May Almighty God bless you in this feast and commemoration of the Easter season. And may he protect you against all sin. Amen. Through the resurrection of his son, God has granted us healing. May he fulfill his promises and bless you with eternal life. Amen. You have mourned for Christ's sufferings. Now you celebrate the joy of his resurrection. May you come with joy to the feast which lasts forever. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us go forth in the holy name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.